Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I feel like my house is in a state of chaos at the moment. Um, I've got a couple projects that I'm in the middle of to include some beef stock, beef bone broth that I'm working on. Was just getting started with this, realized I was missing an ingredient. So Mr. Smith ran to the store for me. He needed to go to the store anyways, but he ran immediately to the store to get what I needed. So last night we went and bought a new refrigerator and we have it all set up there in the corner. And it's coming up to temperature, but in the meantime, I've got a refrigerator now sitting in the middle of my kitchen over here and it, it just feels like everything is in a state of chaos. So about the bone broth, I've got about seven and a half, eight pounds of bones here. These are neck bones and beef shank bones, uh, things like that. I will drizzle them with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, and then I will take some tomato paste, spread it all over the bones, and then stick this whole thing in the oven and just kind of roast it and, and bring out the flavor in the bones. And then all of this, the drippings, and a few more things will go into the stock pot and it will just cook low and slow for hours and hours. So this has a little bit more of an extra step with the roasting part as opposed to doing uh, the chicken broth that I did a couple weeks ago, but it's still not a difficult process and the end result is just amazing. So my big old pot of uh, beef stock ingredients is filled, brought up to a boil, and then I put it down to a simmer, and it's just going to cook and cook and cook for hours. So once that gets done, I will strain out all of the liquids, 
uh, or I should say strain out all of the solids so I have the nice clean liquid. I'll refrigerate that overnight so I can remove all the excess fat from the top and then I will can it all up tomorrow so that will be that'll be tomorrow's mission. Um, I actually have a friend who's going to come over for a visit tomorrow so she may be able to come over and help can. So another thing that I'm going to do is start working on my grapes. I have a couple gallons or a few gallons of grapes in the freezer that we picked from the grapevine um, a few weeks ago and so I'm going to start working on those. I'm going to make muscadine jelly out of those. Hey guys, so the beef broth that you just saw me making, there's a couple different things that you can do once the actual broth has finished that long, low and slow cooking process. Now personally, I refrigerate the broth, I remove the fat from the top before I preserve it. Now if you don't want to do that, that's completely optional. I just choose to do that simply because a lot of the reading that I have done has shown that if there's a lot of fat in the broth that when you can it, sometimes that fat can uh, over time cause it to have a little bit of an off flavor and so just as a precautionary step, I go ahead and I refrigerate the broth so that all of that fat hardens on top and I can easily remove it. Now, when you are refrigerating it, I happened to have two refrigerators at the time, so we kept the refrigerator that we were emptying out plugged in for an extra day so that I could fit that giant stock pot in there and cool it down. If you cannot fit your great big stock pot in the fridge, separate it into separate containers and that will actually allow your broth to cool down even quicker because it's smaller volume that has been broken up uh, and it can cool down quicker and so that is an option. Now whether you choose to remove the fat or not is totally up to you as I said. And then you have a couple choices as to how you can save all that beautiful broth that you have just made. Now you can pour it into freezer containers and freeze it that way. You can put it into freezer bags and freeze it. Um, those actually kind of stack pretty easily. Personally I like to freeze things in freezer containers because I don't really trust freezer bags all that much. However, I choose to can it. That way I'm not reliant upon electricity or using up my limited freezer space. And I have the pressure canning details as far as the weight and processing time and all that on my website, cospaltoncornbread.com, where I also have the complete recipe for the beef bone broth that I just made. And I will put a link to that underneath this video if you are watching this on YouTube. If you are new here, I do at least three videos 
every single week. And over on my website, I have got hundreds of recipes and articles for you to enjoy. And don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter and never miss a thing. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining me again here in the Homestead Kitchen. I will talk to you all next time.